Presenting for us this afternoon is Ralph Piccolo, Vice President of Sales, and Dan Branch, Support Manager for Cinetron. Before we get started, I would like to mention a couple of presentation logistics. First off, this webinar is being recorded, and we will be sure to send you an email with details on how you can view the recording when it is available. Second, we welcome questions, as we will be conducting a Q&A session at the end. Questions can be submitted throughout the presentation by expanding your question box in the right-hand control panel. Simply type a question to an organizer from the drop-down selection. Note that only one control panel can be expanded at a time. If we don't get to your question due to time, we will follow up with you via email or phone following the session. With that, I would like to turn the floor over to Ralph to, be to begin. Ralph? Thanks, Lisa. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for taking the time out this afternoon. Um, before we get into the demonstration, a, a couple of uh, quick facts. Uh, about Symmetron, uh, we're a worldwide company in over 40 countries, um, a leader in integrated CAD CAM solutions for design and manufacturing for mold, tool, and die makers, as well as manufacturer of discrete parts. We're a public company with 28 uh, years of experience and 40,000 installations worldwide. Um, we have 300-plus uh, employees worldwide as well. Um, interesting note on uh, our mission statement, it, it is Symmetron's mission is to become the CAD CAM software of choice for the tooling industry worldwide through continuous innovation, attention to customer needs, and superior technical support. That's our mission, and uh, if we look at our target market out there, um, we're in all of the markets, uh, transportation, uh, consumer products, electronics, machine parts, medical, toys, packaging, aerospace, and more. OK, Dan. Um, in today's webinar, uh, you'll learn how to significantly reduce time and uh, effort of your mold design. Uh, you can you'll, you'll see how you can standardize and automate your your design process, and how you can benefit from most advanced mold design functionality, um, with uh, a lot of this functionality that uh, we've added to the software. Uh, you'll see how um, we take the daily task of uh, of a mold designer and automate the process. Some of the highlights that we'll be going over. Um, our, our process is totally flexible. It's automated. We can work with any type of data, which is a, a very strong point, whether it's um, IGES or SAT, SAP, any of the standard formats, um, a, along with the direct formats. Uh, we have some part analysis tools. Uh, you'll see quick split. You'll see how we can use standard and non-standard mold bases, runner ejection, cooling design. And then uh, adding mold components uh, with the cutting object, which is uh, very important. Also, the uh, we have an ECO manager because we know everybody gets engineering changes uh, halfway through the process of the design. And uh, we'll also explain the full associativity from uh, start to finish. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Dan Branch, and we'll take a look at the software. Thanks, Ralph. Let me bring Symmetron up. Um, well, to talk about mold design, we need a plastic part. And like Ralph was saying, uh, a CAD system for tooling needs to be able to import all kinds of 3D data. And in this case, we've imported a parasolid file. The deadline requirements for tooling and getting started right away uh, you cannot have anything holding you up, you know, especially the built-in limitations of the CAD system. And Symmetron can immediately work on any data of any quality. This part does have a few problems common to imported data. Nothing too serious, uh, just a couple of open points and edges. That would prevent this part from being deemed a perfect solid. But this is absolutely no concern at all especially for mold design, one of the first things we need to do is split the part open, not stop and worry if it's closed. 
Um, there are some other analysis tools we can quickly look at besides checking for gaps. For example, we can get an overall measurement that includes the flat projected area. Uh, this can help calculate the press size needed. These results here can be exported out to a nice report with a picture if you're in the quoting stage. And then for mold design, an important decision is draw direction and the draft and the part given that direction. And you can check this right away in Symmetron using a draft analysis tool. Uh, I've already oriented this part for draw direction. So the colors that we see on the screen here relate to that. Although there is a dialog that explains the colored ranges you can set. A red color would indicate an undercut, given the direction we are looking. Now we can flip the arrow in any direction. And on the screen, we can also call out angles that we may think would be a concern. Ideally, now would probably also be a good time to look at simulating the plastic flow in the part and uh, maybe trying out some gate locations. This is an option inside of Cinetron, and it's uh, just not something that we're going to look at in today's session. So I'm going to leave the part at this point. In a way, a mold design is just a big assembly of parts, and this screen is for starting a new project. It creates a standard assembly structure, puts it in a job folder. And the requirement today is going to be a two cavity mold. So I can choose from a set of standard layouts as a template. So uh, the Symmetron environment will be familiar to most everyone. The tree on the left shows how the mold components will be divided up into some logical sub-assemblies. And the assembly called parting is active first because that's where we're going to work on the part. This guide on the right is just for quick access to common functions. I want to make the point that there is no order to follow here. Symmetron lets you work how you expect to work on the design, not to any strict rules of the system. For some jobs, a mold base might come first, or part and ejection, or whatever the need might be, that's the way you can go about it. We're going to start by loading the work part. Now, because this is a plastic mold, the system knows that scaling for shrinkage has to be applied. And it's going to offer it to me right here. We're going to accept that. And right now, that scaling is being applied. It's happening automatically as we import the part into the project. The two-cavity template that we chose has provided two points on the screen to use. And that gives us a start on where the mold cavities are going to be. At that step, we can tilt the parts for draw direction. But again, I already have the part set to pull in Z. But by adjusting those layout points, the parts can be arranged in the mold in any fashion. Uh, for example. I want to rotate one of these parts around. And I also want to move the parts a little closer together. So moving those layout points moves the part. And later on, an adjustment here will move everything in the mold that's based on the part. Now, because this is really one part in two locations, we only need to work on one of them. So the other one we can hide away in the tree. And because this is for a plastic mold, we know we want to separate the part into a top and a bottom, a core and a cavity. The Symmetron way to do that is to work directly on the part data. We will determine the parting line. And then we're going to create some parting surfaces out from it. The parting function, called quick split, We'll do an automatic analysis on the part. The calculation going on here, again, this is looking at our part along a, our defined draw direction. 
and it puts any geometry that it's sure about into a top set or a bottom set. And then we can visually slide the model open to get a first look at what core and cavity will sort of be like. Anything that's left over in the middle here could be an undercut or a needed side action. What I'm going to do is assign these faces, just using a mouse click, into the lower set. And that's some place that we can check on them a bit further with. Uh, the first check is, again, going to be the draft analysis. But because we use quick split first, now we're able to check in both pull directions at once. So anything now that's showing up in red is definitely a problem to be looked at. Uh, for example, these windows in the park. Now we can create a third pull direction here, like out to the side. Um, quick split has no limit at all to how many directions you can pull. But we don't really need to do that here because this area was kind of designed to slide by itself. So these faces really only need reassigning into the other set, into the top set, again with a mouse click. Again into the draft analysis, and a closer look does show a real problem. This red that we're seeing along this edge, along this front round, this is a common issue actually, where rounds need drafted walls. And a mold design system has to have a solution for creating new parting lines and solving this. The solution in Symmetron is to split any face by a silhouette curve that looks down our draw direction. So this whole round now has been divided along its true parting line. Symmetron makes finding parting lines on complex surfaces something that's actually very easy to do. But then we do have to return to quick split and put these little pieces back in the appropriate set. <clears throat> One other note on the uh, on the split silhouette. Um, which is a, a very nice command. The, the split silhouette, you can also enter in a, a value for uh, 7 degrees, so it will split it from the horizontal up or down 7 degrees. You know, if you have to have uh, grain or uh, texture in the mold, um, you can automatically get that line, instead of at the silhouette, up 7 degrees. We're going to make one last check here uh, and use a dynamic section that lets us see into the part better. Um, because what we can see is one of those faces I sent to the bottom set was a true undercut. This red color is showing it pretty clearly. So this shelf here needs to be released from the mold by a lifter. And I'm going to choose to ignore this for now. Because again, we can work on the mold design in any order we want to. And that helps us really move ahead quickly. So these are the faces, then, that we've designated to be in the core and cavity. And now we're going to move to building the parting surfaces that radiate out from them. It might be easiest to visualize.